Hello friends, this is Junie. We're continuing our lesson for this week and we are on lesson number four, a perspective like none other. And we will move right into question A. How does contemplation of the cross change our lives? All this week we've been talking about um, uplifting the cross. And as we uplift the cross now, and as we uplift it, and as we meditate upon it, how does that change our lives really? practical and it says John 12 32 it says and I if I be lifted up from the earth will draw all men unto me and so Jesus is speaking now and it says as you contemplate on the cross as you lift him up he will draw you and I unto him and selected messages book 1 page 341 when the mind is drawn to the cross of Calvary Christ by imperfect sight is discerned on the shameful cross. Why did he die? In consequence of sin. What is sin? The transgression of the law. Then the eyes are open to see the character of sin. The law is broken but cannot pardon the transgressor. It is our schoolmaster condemning to punishment. Where is the remedy? The law drives us to Christ who was hanged upon the cross, that he might be able to impart his righteousness to fallen sinful man, and then present men to his Father in his righteous character. And so we see that the law, it drives us to Christ. The law cannot help, cannot pardon our sin. It will draw us to Christ, and Christ does the pardoning. And continuing, it says, Jesus sees the guilt of the past and speaks pardon, and we must not dishonor him by doubting his love. This feeling of guiltiness must be laid at the foot of the cross of Calvary. The sense of sinfulness has poisoned the springs of life and of true happiness. Now Jesus says, lay it all on me. I will take your sins. I will give you peace. Banish no longer your self-respect, for I have bought you with the price of my own blood. You are mine. Your weakened will I will I will strengthen. Your remorse for sin I will remove. Then turn your grateful heart, trembling with uncertainty, to him and lay hold on the hope set before you. God accepts your broken, contrite heart and extends to you free pardon. He offers to adopt you into his family with his grace to help your weakness and the dear Savior will lead you on step by step, you placing your hand in His and letting Him guide you. And so we have to do our part. He's calling, He's appealing, He's um, pleading with us to come. And so He will lead us. He will do everything in His power, but we have to do our part. So question B, how does this affect our attitudes and uplift us spiritually? Job 23 verse 16, for God maketh your heart soft, or my heart, for God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. And so God will make our heart soft, and so that, um, so that we can turn to Him and have that tender compassion and that softening will be um, true softening of the heart. And it says, continuing, it says, Look, oh, look upon the cross of Calvary. Behold the royal victim suffering on your account. See, Jesus left all his majestic uh, glory uh, to come down here to, to die on a shameful cross so that we can inherit that life. The Son of God was rejected and despised for our sakes. Can you, in full view of the cross, beholden by the eye of faith the suffering of Christ, tell your tale of woe or trials? Can you nurse revenge of your enemies in your heart while the prayer of Christ comes from his pale and quivering lips for his revilers, his murderers? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. No, we cannot. We cannot, and we, I pray that you will not. You will not hold back. Holding back 
is um, holding yourself from true happiness. So may the Lord help us to find that true happiness and that we will see a different perspective of the cross. That at the cross, he's calling, he's pleading um, for us to accept his sacrifice. So may God help you and may God help me so that we can truly see the value of the cross. Amen.